Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Pod Fix. This will be the reading of the one shot entitled I Gave the Voices in My Head a Megaphone. Here's the summary Itoshi, like any good friend, brainwashes Izuku's anxiety away for a day so he can know some peace. The problem Izuku has no fear of God or consequences. Izuku also has no goddamn filter. Like I said, this is a one-shot with just over 17,000 words. I hope you all enjoy. Hitoshi was intimately familiar with the wrong side of 2 a.m. More often than not, he greeted the hour with all the affection of a second cousin twice removed who kept asking for a personal loan. But Hitoshi was broke and indifferent and couldn't really keep accepting these kinds of calls. Wait, where was he going with this? He's had about four hours of sleep over the last three days. He's so damn tired. Usually, his insomnia had him wandering the halls of his new dorm alone, with the occasional side shuffle past the enigma that was late-night Tokiyami. Sometimes he'd hear strange noises from one of the random rooms of his classmates, but Hitoshi lives by the personal motto of none of my business when it comes to social interactions, the creed of champions and anxious people everywhere. But tonight in particular, he is an accomplice to his crimes against restful sleep, he had hobbled into the common area as soon as his room became too oppressive and stumbled across a hyperventilating Izuku on the couch. So here he sits, shoulder to shoulder with one of the first real friends he made in this damn school, awkwardly guiding the shorter boy into a more reasonable breathing pattern. One that actually provided oxygen to his lungs. He highly recommends it. It takes a few minutes of wheezing before Izuku manages a characteristic apology and an even more characteristic heartfelt thanks like the fact that Hitoshi sitting beside him was a blessing to him. Like Hitoshi hadn't been in this exact same scenario two other times just this month. Nightmares again? He stops himself from rubbing Izuku's back like he was a small child. The urge was tempting, but he could control himself that much at least. Izuku blows out a harsh breath and scrubs at his face. When the sun rises, the dark circles under his eyes will be hidden and he'll be as energetic as ever. But here, next to his friend who conveniently matched the same shade of concealer as him, Hitoshi sees it all. The exhaustion. The panic. The stress. When isn't it nightmares? Izuku asks, more to chastise himself than actually ask Hitoshi because God knows Hitoshi did not have the answer to that one. Want to talk about it? He offers, as always. They never really talk much when they have these informal sleep-deprived anonymous meetings, but it was the thought that counts. Izuku smiles, a little wobbly, but still pretty enough to be reassuring. Hmm. Wait, no, take it back, Hitoshi. Not pretty. Use your words. Different words. He blinks down at his hands, then reboots his mental systems. Izuku had already waved off his question when he was recalibrating, so they sit in blissfully awkward silence for several long minutes. You know. And oh, okay, Izuku was talking. Hitoshi could do the whole talking thing. Sometimes I wish I could scoop out my stupid brain and put something else in. Like what? He asks. Izuku shrugs as best he can as he slouches against the back of the couch. A normal person's brain? Hitoshi joins him in slouching because that seems comfortable as hell right now. He cranes his head back until he feels the satisfying pop from his spine and wishes he could just become liquid. Izuku is not as calm next to him. Calmer than before, yes, but... His knee jitters at lightning speed. If Hitoshi didn't know better, he'd think the other boy's quirk was active. I feel like I should say something about normal people's brains being overrated. You know, out of solidarity. If asked to testify, Hitoshi would best describe the noise Izuku made as a snurt. Normal people get to sleep without almost dying over a presentation. Is that what you were upset over? Izuku holds up a scarred hand and waves it side to side. Kind of. I woke up from a bad dream and tried to practice my presentation for Midnight Sensei's class today, but I stressed out. Why? Izuku mumbles something, chin to his chest, and Hitoshi squints. Everyone knows squinting increases your hearing capabilities. The champion of bone-breaking obviously feels Hitoshi's confused stare because he looks up, pouts, then repeats a little louder. She said I'm bad at talking to people. Hitoshi blinks, then blinks some more. Midnight told Midoriya, Mr. Uplifts Your Spirit, King of Forging Friendships and Rivalries, Sir, It's Your Power, Todoroki, Izuku that he was bad at talking to people, this kid, the one who'd have any villain spilling their life story with his bambi eyes alone, 
the one who, if rumors are to be believed, turned a hero-hating kid into a fanboy and back-talked a serial killer in a fight multiple times. He raises a single eyebrow in challenge. The brow says it all. I get nervous for presentations or interviews, Izuku groans. He runs a hand through his hair. It's hard, with everyone staring at you. You do get kind of rambly, Hitoshi concedes. He was there for the latest interview practice, the more social teachers put the students through. Izuku was a stuttering mess, but at least Todoroki's deadpan answers and Bakugo's rage were entertaining enough to balance out the painfully awkward parts. Thanks, it's the anxiety, he quips. Hitoshi automatically says a low mood, but frowns. You know, I noticed something. You act a lot different with me on nights like this than with anyone else. Your sass has been criminally underappreciated by your friends. Our friends, Izuku says. Hitoshi lulls his head back and forth in what he hopes passes as agreement. He likes certain people out of the chaotic group of classmates he's been saddled with. He won't lie. Izuku's closest friends are all right, though the main instigators of a lot of shit, with no one being any wiser, always hilarious to witness firsthand. He likes talking with Kaminari and Jiro, they're both cool, and they all share similar music tastes. Yamomo is queen, period, but he's a little too intimidated to actually hold a meaningful conversation. He vibes with Shoji, despite never having shared a single word, which makes him respect the multi-armed teen even more. He's ambivalent to a lot of the others. Then there's the motherfuckers like Bakugo and Mineta, that he'd really rather not know personally. Why do they not get to experience the majesty that is your sheer disrespect and lame jokes? Wow, Izuku croaks. He cracks a grin before falling solemn. I guess... He starts. He brings a finger to his lips and mumbles away, Hitoshi too exhausted to catch any of it. The green-haired hero student catches himself and smiles sheepishly at his friend. I guess I feel more like myself with you. Hitoshi exhales sharply because that was more of an emotional punch than he was prepared for. Feelings were icky at, oh god, 3.47 a.m. I'm sure the Deku squad wants to actually know you, though. Nightmares and all. Izuku grimaces at the reminder of the name Ashido had dubbed their friend group several months ago. They might, or do. It's not like I'm lying to them or anything. Shoto and I have had conversations like this before, but well... With you, it's still different? Does that make sense? All the bad parts of my head don't seem so bad. You'd understand me. Hitoshi gurgles in embarrassment. He throws an arm over his face and thanks the universe for the dark, hiding his blush. How does one respond to that? Your friends would understand? Ditto. He chooses the tired and true method of avoidance. And Midnight says you're bad with talking to people. Izuka smushes his own cheeks in a self-soothing gesture, while not looking over the flustered transfer student who still had trouble accepting any kind of praise or positive encouragement. Itoshi knew his flaws, okay? I am, at least for stuff like presentations, and with strangers, and for a grade, and when I'm stressed, and... He tries to list more, but Itoshi takes the arm from his face and lightly bonks the top of Izuka's head. You'll do fine on your presentation. I'm sure it's well thought out and researched, which is more than I can say for a third of us in class. Hitoshi's own presentation was on the symbolism of purple in hero art and costumes. He has an appropriate amount of star wipes in his slideshow and feels confident enough to pass. Knowing Izuku, there's a highly detailed, informative, and unfortunately color-coded novella that he'll try to stutter through. I just want the anxiety off for one day, I swear, Izuku moans despondently. His leg had never stopped jiggling at all through the entire conversation. Hitoshi is even more exhausted looking at the bouncing foot. Hitoshi will admit, he hasn't been helped by a lot of people in his life, but when he is, he never forgets a debt. Aizawa is owed a blood pact, and potentially his firstborn with how much support and training the hero provided him since the sports festival. Present Mike also gets his loyalty with his specialized lessons on improv and the vocal changing device on his costume. Izuku. He offered a hand up, encouraged Hitoshi's dream, and then provided an incredibly detailed breakdown and training plan for his quirk. Hitoshi cannot and will not forget one of his first supporters. And, well, all Izuku has asked for is his friendship, which feels more like Hitoshi still owing the other boy something, but Hitoshi wants to help where he can, so he sees a potential solution to Izuku's current problem. I can make that happen. What? Izuku cocks his head to the side. Face still squished between his hands. Hitoshi nods in an attempt to look confident. 
I can brainwash your anxiety away for the day. Can you really do that? I've been getting a lot better at suggestions. Your notes are thorough. Aizawa's been having me practice. Izuku immediately lights up and tries to interrogate him on what all he's been working on, but Hitoshi can keep a secret like a champion and will not be betraying Aizawa's trust. He values life. All of the teachers have been avoiding the teacher's lounge during a specific time every day without even realizing it. Aizawa gets his uninterrupted naps. Hitoshi gets his laughs and training. Everyone's happy. You'd really do that for me? Izuku's tone is one Hitoshi's heard a few times after the more gruesome nightmares and ensuing panic attacks. When the other boy didn't want to talk, but would still respond if Hitoshi needed to. Unsure if things were real or okay. Not confident in his welcome. Sometimes Hitoshi wonders about the bad parts of his brain that Izuku keeps talking about. They skirt around the darker parts of their issues, but on rare occasions, Hitoshi can peer past the curtain. He hasn't made out the shape in the shadows, but he's putting some pieces together when he's not still following the mind-your-business motto. What can he say? Izuku inspires some curiosity with his contradictions. The tone is also one that prompts more of those yuck, sentimental thoughts, so he shoots a lazy finger gun at Izuku and smirks. Free of charge, buddy. The teen chuckles a little nervously before biting his lip and adopting the trademark. Sure, why the hell not? Look, so many exhausted people owned. Go for it. You'd be a lifesaver, at least for my art history grade. You sure? Yes, I trust. Hitoshi snags him before he can say anything else sappy. This is why he usually wanders alone on late night adventures. The emotion will make him break out in hives. He waves a hand in front of Izuka's face to make sure he's not pulling any bullshit with his own quirk and breaking out of control like the sports festival. Have they practiced with Izuka under Hitoshi's control since then? Yes. Would it make sense for Izuka to break out of a brainwashing he specifically agreed to? No. Will Hitoshi still check? Absolutely. Izuka's the ultimate wild card, especially with quirk shenanigans. Izuka's eyes remain blank. Hitoshi is almost tempted to leave him like this in order for the guy to relax for a second. But ultimately, this experiment will give him a full day of relaxation. He knows which he would prefer if he was Izuku. Now that he's here, he doesn't want to half-ass it. Giving the class supernova a nice day is the least he can do, right? The teenager's been fighting off villains from day one. Once you go to sleep, you will stay asleep until your alarm. When you wake up, you will not experience any anxiety for 24 hours. The key to suggestive brainwashing, Hitoshi has found, is that he has to imbue his words with specific intent and focus. The command still runs in the back of the person's mind because it is working towards a goal, not an order. A key difference that Izuku had highlighted in his journal entry for him. Hitoshi pushes as much chill vibe and confidence in public speaking as he can alongside the order. He has literally zero experience with the last one, but he knows Izuku will appreciate it. And then, in a moment of pure insomniac genius, Hitoshi wings it and finishes with, Just be true to yourself. Like some kind of pop singer or mental health guru. But Izuka's already blinking when Hitoshi loosens the control, so what's done is done. Did it work? The shorter boy asks. Hitoshi nods, suddenly weary with his quirk use at less than optimal conditions. His head hurts. You'll wake up anxiety-free for the day. Huh. <sighs> Izuku breathes out with a trembling smile full of gratitude. Thanks, Shinsokun. I really appreciate this. I'll go to bed then. I'll see you tomorrow. Hitoshi mentally pats himself on the back for helping out his pretty, no, friend. Izuku heaves himself up with a soft, genuine smile and offers a tiny wave goodnight before heading to the stairwell. Hitoshi watches him go and closes his eyes, still fused with the couch. He decides to catch whatever rest he can in the quiet common area and let Hitoshi of tomorrow deal with his exhaustion. The Hitoshi of tomorrow has a confident Izuka to look forward to. The Hitoshi of that moment was finally giving in to the sweet siren call of sleep. It'd be fine, right? Yeah, it'd be fine. The first clue that something is off the next morning is Izuku casually walking through the class door before the bell rings sans his tie. If the abomination he usually wore could be legally classified as a tie. The top button of his shirt is even open. His smile is almost euphoric as he quietly greets his friends in his path to his desk. Ida turns red while holding back his concerned dress code lecture as Aizawa strolls into the room with a thermos of coffee, as big as his head. Lucky bastard. Good morning, Sensei. The class dutifully greets with varying levels of enthusiasm. Aizawa simply grunts and nods before cracking his shoulders. All right, we have some announcements. 
Aizawa reels off their updated training schedule for the week, a request from Lunch Rush to not throw fish cakes at each other in the cafeteria again, and a joint training session the school is setting up with Katsubetsu Academy. The last announcement is met with excited cheers in the midst of the class yelling questions about details and issuing vague threats to people who aren't even in the room. Mineta rubs his hands together and bleats. I bet they'll have a ton of babes. We need some fresh eye candy around here. Hey, Mineta, Izuku asks, turning in his chair to face the pervert behind him while Aizawa demands the class calm down. Shut the fuck up. A pin dropping at that moment would be as loud as a gunshot. The class stares in shock. Midoriya, Ida yelps after coming to his senses. Language. Oh, sorry. Izuka pulls a contrite face and turns back to Mineta before speaking in perfect English. Shut the fuck up. Hitoshi, who was already half asleep since the first bell rang, chokes on air at the sharp pronunciation. Aizawa stares down his number one nuisance with such an incredulous look, Hitoshi might wonder if he was having an aneurysm. Ida sure looked like he was experiencing one. Hitoshi watches in fascinated horror as Azuka nods once at Mineta's slack-jawed self and turns to patiently look at their homeroom teacher. What the hell? Hitoshi's pretty sure that came from Kaminari. Dude, Kirishima breathes in either awe or fear. Hard to tell. He too cannot decide on what to feel in front of the oncoming train wreck. He abruptly realizes that he may have made a mistake last night in the most entertaining way. Aizawa pinches the bridge of his nose and visibly prays for patience. Itoshi has seen that stance many times during training and wholeheartedly sympathizes. What's wrong with you now, problem child? Do you want the list chronologically or alphabetically? Izuku fires back, pleasant as anything. Bakugo abruptly turns around in his desk chair to scowl. What the fuck, Deku? Izuku slowly breaks eye contact to look Bakugo up and down, then huffs and looks back at the teacher in dismissal. Hitoshi has never seen anything sexier. Wait, no. Stop that brain. This is not the time. It's crisis mode. Bakugo gargles out what passes as a scream, but Aizawa's erasure and the threat of the capture weapon bring the blonde from a raging boil down to a dangerous simmer. Smoke starts to curl from his hands, but Aizawa ignores it with practiced ease and continues his interrogation. Are you under the effects of a quirk? Oh, God. Hitoshi was so in for it as the quirk effect in question. He didn't know what weapon he was releasing upon his unsuspecting class, but maybe if he was nice and repentant, they'd show him some mercy. Hmm. Technically, Izuku folds his hands in front of him, eyes crinkling as he smiles happily. Hitoshi wheezes into his palms, distressed. He knew Aizawa looked at him. He just knew it. Hopefully the rest of the class whispering or choking on scared laughter covered for him. Are you going to elaborate? Do I need to? A pause that lasted way too long for Hitoshi's sanity. He can almost see the exact moment their teacher decides that no, actually, today is not the day to handle any shenanigans. If, he grits out, you're not hurt or experiencing any negative side effects, then no. Are you? Nope. Izuku pops the pee in an adorably annoying way. His eyes always eye twitching. Hitoshi is still too nervous to look up from hiding his face. He'd bet good money his mentor's eye was twitching. All right. Let a teacher know if you do have any issues. And with that phrase, Aizawa has washed his hands of the problem child for the moment. Hitoshi knows he would kill to protect any of his students, but he'd also kill to have a vacation from the havoc they tend to wreak. And Izuka smiles, expression still a little looser than normal. Thank you, Sensei. You're the best, he chirps. Actually chirps. Hitoshi's getting emotional whiplash. We're just going to ignore him telling me to shut up, Mineta chimes in. The entire class shuts him down with a yes. Even Koda was nodding. Izuku yawns. Anyway, Aizawa stresses the word. We will have more details about the joint training session next week, but it will take the second half of the day on Thursday. If you have any other questions, just ask me later. For now, stay quiet and don't cause a scene. He side-eyes the still-smoking Bakiko who scowls. The underground hero then proceeds to carefully place his thermos on his desk, and crawl into a sleeping bag to pass the rest of homeroom period in a mental health recovery nap. Half of the class immediately wants to join. The other half pounces. Bakugo growls and hunches over his desk. Hitoshi valiantly tries to ignore the increasingly louder questions from Ida and Kirishima by closing his eyes and pretending he was somewhere far, far away from the chaos. He knows deep in his bones this was only the beginning. Midoriya, are you all right? If this quirk is affecting you, we should head to recovery, girl. Midori, bro, that was so manly. What kind of quirk is it? Oh my god, Midoriya, this is so weird. 
How'd you get by a quirk? Midoriya Kun, as much as it is warranted otherwise, we should try to treat our fellow students with respect. We are hero students, after all. Aizawa sensei didn't seem to care, is the first thing Izuku says during the Inquisition. Regardless, we must act to an exemplary standard. I believe the quirk you were influenced by has hampered your usual demeanor, but rest assured, we as a class will help. We can find another tie for you as well. Don't worry so much about the tie, ida -kun. The dress code is important, midoriya -kun. It doesn't seem to matter when Kachan doesn't wear his. You talk to him sometimes, but it never sticks. Besides, I don't know if what I do to my tie actually complies with the dress code. He snorts derisively at himself. Yeah, it's a little, um, wonky sometimes, dude. Kaminari chuckles nervously. It's hard to tie it, and I didn't want to struggle with it today. I never had a dad to teach me the proper method, and by the time I'd gotten comfortable enough with a father figure to ask, my hand doesn't want to work as it should. Izuku holds up a scarred and slightly crooked fingers while he rambles. So if no one usually has a problem with it, the tie isn't a big deal today, okay? S Still, Ida stutters over the word, as his metaphorical engine stalls. The other nearby students shuffle awkwardly in place. It's important. Izuku sighs. ida -kun, you're one of my best friends and I treasure you greatly. But please don't lecture me about inconsequential rules when you're the first and only one here to attempt murder. What? Class Prez, murder? I mean, I've thought about it. Todoroki murmurs to himself, beneath the yelling. Hitoshi only hears because his desk is right next to the heterochromatic teen. He's overheard a lot of interesting non-sequiturs from his desk mate, and honestly, this wasn't even top ten. Soft same. Oh, that's Uraraka, who's standing close to their desks. She'd typically be one of the first checking in on Izuku, but it seems her danger sense is top tier because she immediately backed away from the ticking time bomb that was surrounding the green-haired boy. She watches in amusement as Ashido and Kaminari turn to Ida and ask what looks like extremely prying questions. Their class president stammers out excuses, face bright red and bad at lying. Izuku is also watching in amusement as the interrogation shifts away from him. Izuku, with his damn sixth sense, must feel all three of them staring because he glances over and fucking winks. His curly hair is as wild as usual and a smirk plays on his lips. Uraraka squeaks and Todoroki freezes in place. Hitoshi hunches his shoulders. Oh no, he groans in gay panic. Oh no. Okay, what's going on? Uraraka asks. She's looking straight at Hitoshi. Damn observant people. I don't know, he tries. A dangerous glint enters the girl's eyes. Okay, okay. Look, um... Todoroki and Uraraka listen in fascination as Hitoshi quietly explains Izuku worrying over his presentation the previous night and has offered to brainwash him. It's really only to relax him so he wouldn't stress over his grade today. I was not expecting that, whatever that is. You were just trying to help. Todoroki comforts him with all the verbal emotion of wet cardboard. For a boy who has slowly been growing into social awareness this past year, he still isn't the best at reassurance, but Hitoshi will take what he can get. Uraraka nods sympathetically. I should see if I can override the command. Hitoshi sighs. What? Why? Can you even unbrainwash someone? Todoroki asks. Why? He repeats incredulously. He dutifully ignores the doubt in Todoroki's question. We're not even a half hour into the school day and I saw what Sensei has already given up from Midori's aura alone. I know how this is going to play out. Hint, there will be tears. Mostly his own. You just took away his anxiety for the day, right? That's a nice thing to do. Stopping it now is a little mean, she tries to explain. He understands. He doesn't like the thought of bringing Izuku's anxiety and stress back either. Izuku deserves a day off from his demons and the idea of inviting them back into his mind leaves a bad taste in Toshi's mouth. Never mind the fact that he maybe sort of isn't sure how to do it anyway, but damn it, he's going to be a hero. He has to try to stop collateral damage. I'll admit, this would be nice of me if I hadn't fucked up. Okay, it's not just anxiety. I suggested that he be true to himself, too. Wait, this is true to himself? Uraraka startles. She seems conflicted, wondering if what she's known about her friend has been a lie. Todoroki continues to stare at Izuka, but this time in contemplation. Izuka moves on from the crowd in front of him and focuses on his ever-present notebook, enthusiastically writing what Itoshi is sure are world domination plans. I think this is Midoriya without any inhibitions, Todoroki states. He's still him, but less. Nervous? She finishes as he trails off. Fucked up? Hitoshi offers. Uraraka swats at him without a glance in his direction. Ow. 
I was going to say desperate to make everyone like him, but that seemed too mean. The three paused for a second. Uraraka pounced. That's kind of accurate, though. Aw, oh, Deku. I really feel like I should stop this, Hitoshi mutters. He's conflicted. No matter what he does at this point, he'd be a little guilty. Bring back Izuku's anxiety after promising to help? Or let Izuku's unfiltered brain roam unsupervised and make the boy deal with the fallout? Uraraka gently places a hand on his shoulder. Her face is determined and bright. No. No, let it play out. He is abruptly reminded that this is the same group of friends who went off to save a kidnapped classmate with only some discount disguises. They all regularly push themselves past the point of exhaustion out of some weird cycle of encouragement and empowerment. Uraraka herself flung herself across cities with zero gravity to punch people in the face while laughing. None of them were remotely normal. They thrived in the chaos. Suyu is the only sane one in the Deku squad, he swears. He needs to buy her a fruit basket or something. He gapes at Uraraka for a long moment, trying to figure out how to organize his thoughts beyond blue screening. You're actually freaking out about this. Todoroki still is yet to look away from Izuku's back, even as he talks to them. Hitoshi claps his hands together and presses them to his mouth. I don't think you understand. You both should know how much trouble Midoriya can get into in a regular day. You have a point. It'll be fine. Todoroki says blandly. Listen, he is a sarcastic little shit with a heart of gold, a genius brain, and enough anxiety to nerf God. I just took away the last one. You realize that I may have doomed us all? Uraraka hums doubtfully. I don't think it'll get that bad. No. Todoroki interrupts. His eyes are distant, remembering something fondly based on the soft smile on his usually impassive face. No. It'll get pretty bad. He finally looks back over to Itoshi with passionate confidence. We'll still let it happen. Maniacs. All of them. If we're doing this, you're coming with me. If Izuku was upset at his own behavior when he woke up tomorrow, Hitoshi would not be the only one complicit. He can at least say he put up a token protest and tried to stop it. Part of him wants to take this whole day back and keep it from going off the rails. Protect his friend's dignity. The other part, the one that may make him an unofficial Deku Squad member, Thinks it'd be nice to have some popcorn for the show. Well, no helping it, Uraraka says. She waves to catch Suyu's attention across the room from where she was talking to Jiro and Tokiyami. She beckons the frog girl to join them, and while Suyu gets up, a surprising Jiro following, Uraraka bounces over to the small group standing near Izuku. Disperse! Uraraka channels her inner Ida and chops the air dramatically. She grabs said boy by the arm and drags him away. Kirishima, Kaminari, and Ashido pout at losing their source of answers before turning to a tetchy Bakugo and bemused Saro. Okay, so, the girl starts when Ida, Suyu, and Jiro are standing around Todoroki's and Shinzo's desks. Wait, when did Yayorozu show up? He hadn't seen her approach, but she was suddenly there next to Jiro with a concerned look on her face, glancing at Izuku who was only a few desks away. No need to worry, Deku's going to be fine. He had asked Shinzo-kun to brainwash him for something, and it's only going to last the day. It's complicated, he starts. Jiro smirks and says, I already heard. This is funny as hell. Well, if Jiro already eavesdropped, he had no doubt Shoji also knows the situation. Luckily, the two people with the quirks best suited to information gathering were chill and could keep their damn mouths shut. Agakure, the other stealth expert, was a little too gossipy for Hitoshi's personal taste. Will Midoriya really be fine? Ida asks, completely tense. Will this really only last a day? Hitoshi hears. Yes, it's only for 24 hours. He's already fine, Uraraka reassures. Ida still flushed and slightly chagrined face as otherwise. Why 24? That's the longest I've seen it hold. At least for a one-time thought implant. He hasn't gotten the exact science down yet. How's it possible you can brainwash anxiety away anyway? Jiro asks in a low voice. Hitoshi shrugs, not willing to disclose the full details of his suggested brainwashing training. Suyu and Yayorozu immediately understand, like the queens they are. So that's what happened, Kero. We just have to power through and support Deku, Uraraka cheers. Ida's already frowning. Is there a way to reverse the effect? Nope, she firmly denies, like the chaotic liar she apparently is. Hitoshi's a little impressed. Jiro, sensible, down-to-earth Jiro, raises an eyebrow at him in mock skepticism, but then shrugs and accepts Uraraka's statement. She just heard how he's currently feeling about this whole mess and apparently has decided to just go with the flow, like he's not concerned for the mental well-being of the school. 
Don't you want Deku-kun to be happy and relaxed? Well, I suppose. Hitoshi tries not to snort. He doubts relaxation will be the end result. Ida is certainly not relaxed. It's fascinating that you can do this, Shinsokun, Yagirozu praised. Though I must say, maybe it's more plausible that your quirk has ordered Midoriya-kun to act a certain way than altering a chemical imbalance. I'd love to discuss it more. If you're able to just turn anxiety off, you should talk to the business department about selling your services, Karo. Sugiyu says. Teases? Wait, is she teasing him, or is she honestly offering advice? Some pocket change would be nice, but it sounded like a lot more work and socializing than he really wants to deal with. Technically, Shinzo-kun's quirk is just suppressing certain chemicals in my brain. Izuku's voice startles all eight students by suddenly cutting into their conversation. My body is following the command, even if I'm not consciously able to do so. It's an interesting sensation. Honestly, I feel a little high. The green-haired teenager looks over at them from his desk with a peaceful expression. How much did you hear? Itoshi asks, shocked. Izuka just grins. Homeroom's ending. The bell rings at that exact second, and Aizawa's already inching along the floor in his sleeping bag. Hitoshi watches the demented caterpillar escape with jealousy. Cementos' lecture is as dry as usual. Hitoshi actually loves reading in languages, but some of the literature their teacher picks for class should be written off as medical sleep aid. Nothing against the hero at all. Hitoshi certainly respects the guy, but he'd engage more students with something other than the book equivalent of plain wheat toast. The entire first period passes with zero incident except for the occasional glance at Izuku. The teen's shoulders are completely tension-free, but... His posture isn't his usual hunch over his desk. He's leaning back in the chair, taking notes at the world's most casual speed of light. Hitoshi swears he sees green sparks from Azuka's hands, but the rest of his body remains unhurried. Second period starts with ectoplasm collecting their papers on biology and DNA for this module of their science class. He begins his lecture as usual, discussing mutation quirks and genetics. Who can tell me what makes a mutation quirk biologically different from any other quirk? Izuku immediately shoots his hand up and the teacher calls on him. Izuku smiles and waves his hands emphatically as he speaks. It's quite interesting, Sensei. There are different levels of mutation quirks that have been studied, and the general scientific consensus assumes that these differences can be traced along the DNA from a person's genomes. Most non-mutated quirks don't have the same genome sequencing. It varies for every individual, of course, but there's a noticeable sequencing difference between someone with an overall quirk mutation like Suyu-chan or Ojiro-kun's quirks and mutations that occur alongside the development of the quirk factor, like Tokiyami-kun or Hagakure-chan's. Wait, I don't have a mutation quirk, says the invisible girl. We are literally unable to see you, Izuku points out. But, but the quirk analyst in elementary said I had an emitter quirk that was just always active. Hagakure-chan, no, Izuku tilts his head. That analyst was a certifiable idiot. If you had an emitter quirk, Aizawa sensei would be able to turn you visible when he erased it. But since he can't affect your quirk factor beyond restricting your light flash attacks, you obviously have a physical mutation as well as a quirk factor. Just because you can manipulate one part of your quirk as if it was an emitter does not classify the full scope of your abilities the same way. Your quirk is light refraction mutinism. Please update your paperwork and tell me the name of that analyst so we can publicly shame them. What? Akakure tries to say, but just ends up squeaking. They can't see her hands, but her sleeves are flailing. All right, then. Ectoplasm clears his throat. Do you have anything else to add, Midoriya? Only that the prevailing misconception about mutation quirks stem from being under-researched and that speaking on a cellular level, every quirk is a mutation quirk that physically mutates some part of the brain or body in order to activate the quirk. We simply classify quirks based on their attributes or functions, and have found these minor genetic differences between emitter, mental, and physical mutation quirks to further establish said differences. Of course, as I said, there is a standard deviation in a person's DNA when we have a physical mutation quirk, Versus something like telekinesis. More research is needed to truly understand the development of these physical mutations in the womb since other quirks tend to activate around a certain age. But more scientists are veering away from mutation studies due to growing quirkist beliefs, Izuku info dumps. Also, the chapter on hereditary quirk genetics in the textbook is wrong. I can bring you the correction, Sensei. Damn, tell him, Saro breathes out in the stunned silence. Ectoplasm stands in place for several long seconds before sighing nodding once and continuing the lesson. He doesn't call on Izuku for the remaining period. Their next class is English, but as they're bracing for the sheer vibrancy of present Mike, they're greeted with Aizawa's defeated stare when he comes through the door. Where is Mike, Sensei? Ojiro raises his hand. Aizawa blinks at him for a second before sighing. 
The idiot tried to come into work feeling sick. He's been sent home to rest, so we're covering his classes. Is he all right? Asked Jiro, who's made no secret that President Mike is their favorite teacher and role model. Aizawa nods. Recovery Girl said it was a simple stomach bug, and he should be fine with rest and medicine. He'll be back in tomorrow. Several teens sigh in relief, Hitoshi joining in quietly. As a rule, he doesn't like loud people, even if he's surrounded by them, but President Mike is an honest and kind teacher who is gentle with the quieter members of their class. He's Hitoshi's second favorite adult in the school. Aoyama also raises his hand. Are you going to teach us English, Sensei? Absolutely not. Aizawa responds immediately. Hitoshi knows the hero is fluent in English, whether from his own studies or just osmosis through his best friend, he's not sure. He has the qualifications to give them an English lesson. Then why are you the one substituting Aizawa Sensei? Izuku asks, straightforward. Ida almost flinches at the perceived rudeness. Aizawa pointedly does not look at Izuku and just grunts out. This will be a self study period, and shakes out a sleeping bag. Hitoshi smirks at his mentor, treating this opportunity as another nap time. Izuku chuckles as well. The class collectively sweat drops when Aizawa disappears behind the podium, then immediately scrambles to do everything but study with the free time they've been miraculously given. Hitoshi debates napping as well. Izuku stretches, and Hitoshi does not look. The green-haired boy stands from his desk and walks over to Hakakuri with a leisurely pace. Hakakuri-chan, I was serious about checking up on your paperwork. There's a lot of resources I can provide you about a dual emitter mutant quirk. Thanks, Midoriya-kun, she says with an awkward chuckle. She fidgets in place. Though I'm not sure how to feel about my quirk being completely wrong after all these years. Izuku, who probably would have apologized profusely and stammered on a usual day, just shrugs and nods. Understandable. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Having to suddenly understand changes to your quirk can be daunting. If anyone would know, it's the boy wonder himself who kept revealing new aspects of his quirk in what felt like every other training session. Kirishima bounds up to the boy, interrupting whatever Hagakure was about to reply with. Hey, Midori bro, that was awesome earlier. Do you think you can analyze my quirk too, please? Oh, me too, Ashido adds. I... I would like to know as well, Tokiyami quietly states. Izuku lights up. He goes to his bag and pulls out a notebook before returning, flips it open, and cracks his knuckles. I thought you'd never ask. What proceeds is the politest and most helpful smackdown Hitoshi has ever witnessed. He excuses himself from that party. It wouldn't matter much since he'd gotten the recent updates for his quirk analysis just two weeks ago per one long-winded text in the middle of the night. Then again, Izuku might have even more to add, but Hitoshi is content to simply watch. Izuku flies through compliments without a hint of shame, praising his classmates' his technique and abilities. He is enthusiastic about Kirishima's unbreakable mode, Kaminari's new directional gear, Tokiyami's flight ability by using Dark Shadow. He goes through all of his classmates surrounding him as they gravitate towards the group, Bakugo scoffing by himself in a corner and Mineta blatantly ignored by everyone. Then Izuku goes straight for the jugular, or the heart of his curiosity. He points out flaws in Kirishima's fighting style and the openings he leaves. Also, actually look into protective gear for your costume. I get that shirts might be restrictive for your quirk, but you won't always be able to react to a sneak attack, and an exposed chest just screams, attack me to villains. Kirishima is enthusiastically nodding when Izuku grabs his hands. Also, please stop saying everything is manly. Please. I don't think I have the time to really dive into gender identity and pigeonholing yourself or others into certain masculine stereotypes as a personality trait, but remind me to lend you some books later. Kaminari-kun, you cannot go for the all-out attack as it leaves you vulnerable. Aizawa-sensei was right that it is difficult to save others if you are capacitated, and I think you could also benefit from that advice. Have you tried capacitators or limiters so you don't overload, like batteries? Maybe work on your physical combat abilities instead of your quirks so you can effectively tase people? Your close-range capabilities are somewhat lacking. Ojiro-kun, seriously look into weaponry. Maybe a gun. Villains are expecting to watch for your tail or your fighting style, but they won't expect a bullet or a knife. You always need an advantage with a physical mutation such as yours. You're intuitive, and with a little practice, you could be very efficient as an apprehension hero. Momo-chan, I mean this in the nicest, least Mineta way possible, but you need to both eat more and change your costume. There are so many weaknesses. You don't have enough fat stores to properly use your quirk, especially with the larger scale cannons you're fond of, which we'll get to later. But without those extra lipids, you'll find yourself running low in a drawn-out battle, also, you know support can make a costume with your DNA so your creations will phase through the fabric instead of having to take your shirt off? Actually, hakakure chan did you know about that in your own costume? Here, let me give you Hatsume Mei's phone number, I swear. No one cares about durability or underage protection laws. At least half the class receives a thorough analysis that balances both their strengths and smack-talks their weaknesses. 
Hitoshi spots their classmates honestly taking notes or writing down Azuka's suggestions in a stupor, at least when they're not staring into space completely blindsided or questioning their life choices. Kirishima and Kaminari in particular are flabbergasted and scrambling. Some of the other teenagers receive seemingly random comments or weird questions. Do you think if you concentrated on a light enough pH level you could make acid that causes hallucination? Like a literal acid trip? He asks Ashido, who lights up. Hitoshi can feel Aizawa's migraine from here. Could you control Principal Nezu? He asks Koda, who blinks rapidly. Since he's also an animal. He has intelligence, but your quirk is essentially brainwashing animals. Do they remember what you asked them to do? Do they have opinions on it? You're very kind and polite, so I'm sure they don't care, but have you tried on animals with quirks? Do you think Principal Nezu could communicate with you without the human language? I'd like to measure your strength both on sugar and off sugar. Oh, and with different types of sugar, too, for science, he demands of Sato, who can only nod perturbed. He literally walks up to Shoji's desk and pouts. You're too tall, and honestly, I'm offended. Which causes everyone to laugh. Shoji, in an unprecedented move, simply stands and offers Izuku a hug. The shorter boy squints his eyes, but accepts, hugging back. Shoji wraps six arms around Izuku and gently squeezes. Hitoshi knows how Izuku feels about hugs, weirdly touch-starved that he is. He shudders the tiniest bit, but if anyone notices, no one says anything. Shoji holds the boy for a few seconds longer. Izuku clears his throat, a little confused but happy. All right, I'm not offended anymore. Uraraka and Hagakure giggle, a few others chuckling too. Shoji just releases Izuku and crinkles his eyes, smiling behind his mask. He returns to his seat as Izuku narrows in on Aoyama, saying something about cheese consumption and low-level lactose intolerance. But Itoshi narrows in as Shoji leans back in his chair, the mouth on his arm almost smirking. He notices both Tokiyami and Hitoshi looking at him. Hugging always calms down short people. Dark shadow peeks out beneath Tokiyami's cake and cackles while Hitoshi snorts. The rest of the students surrounding Izuku laugh and talk amongst themselves, still keeping everyone close by. Shoji's shoulders shake in silent laughter. Hitoshi thinks having friends suits the other boy. Tokiyami, I have so many questions about you and Dark Shadow, you have no idea. Izuku approaches after leaving Aoyama sparkling, but a little green in the face. We will do our best to assist, the bird-headed boy says solemnly. Your guidance is greatly appreciated. Dark Shadow grins at Izuku. What Fumi said, they screech loudly. Stupid, Bakugo huffs and mutters under his breath, but still characteristically loud. Who the fuck even cares about Deku's bullshit? Dark Shadow scowls, and Izuku pauses. Kachan, acting like a dick won't make yours any bigger, so shut the fuck up unless you've got something constructive to say. Oh, shit! Ashido whispers screams. Bakugo immediately stands up, apoplectic. Kirishima places a strong hand on Bakugo's shoulder, who violently shrugs it off. Do not start a fight, Aizawa intones from behind the podium. I will expel all of you. Most of the class hold their breath while Bakugo vibrates angrily for long, long seconds. Kirishima hovers nearby while the blonde takes deep breaths and scowls at his desk. Izuku watches placidly as Bakugo huffs, digs in his bag, and pulls out headphones. He turns on music and folds his arms like the ornery bastard he is. Hitoshi spares a second to remind himself how little he actually cares. Hitoshi also marks a tally for his mentor. Aizawa is obviously checked out from whatever he thinks is happening with Izuku to spare his remaining sanity, but hey. He hadn't stopped the verbal humiliation, only Bakugo's meltdown. He has been telling Izuku that Aizawa is secretly sadistic and laughs at their pain for a while now. Izuku never doubted him, but it'll be nice to have yet another example. Izuku enthusiastically starts asking questions to both Tokiyami and Dark Shadow once it's clear Bakugo won't interrupt again. He lulls a bit when he's distracted by writing their answers down. Do you do this for everyone you meet? Jiro asks, fascinated at the full notebook still in Izuku's hands. She's sitting on Ashido's desk. Not really. I started analyzing hero fights, so I have a lot more heroes and villains than people we know, but all your quirks are so interesting I couldn't help myself. What kind of heroes do you have? Do you have Crimson Riot? Kirishima sparkling so much in excitement that Aoyama looks a little impressed. Izuku flips through his notebook. Hitoshi sees Todoroki startle out of the corner of his eye. There is a mad scramble to his pocket and to pull out his phone. The other boy surreptitiously glances between his phone and Izuku for several seconds before he props the phone up against his notebook, camera facing the other boy, and turns to Hitoshi. Shinso, I need a favor. Hitoshi raises his eyebrow. The last time Todoroki asked someone for a favor, there were a dozen exploded eggs all over the dorm kitchen. Yeah? Can you ask Midoriya what he thinks of Endeavor? Your dad? 
The disgusted nose crunch that Todoroki responds with only lasts a nanosecond, but speaks volumes. Hitoshi prides himself on being able to read people. He's worked hard on learning psychoanalyzation skills to get even the most hard-headed idiots to respond, so he's always known Todoroki has some kind of issues with his family. Who wouldn't with a famous and famously hot-headed father? But the look on his face makes Satoshi wonder just what kind of issues might actually be going on. Then again, not his personal business. He'll maybe, possibly do some digging, though. Insomnia leads to all kinds of late-night research binges. Why can't you just ask Midoriya yourself if you really want to know? He asks. Todoroki looks away. Is that a blush? Can the thermodynamic wonder even do that? I would consider it a favor if you could ask for me. Huh. All right, not like it's a big deal for me. Like it apparently is for you, he wants to say, but refrains. He tries to curb some of his more asshole tendencies around his classmates. Well, explode a boy in sour grapes, as the exceptions. Besides, this is simple enough to do for his quiet desk neighbor, and Hitoshi thinks he should maybe rack up some karma before the day is over, if just to balance out what he's caused. Hey, Midoriya. He catches Izuka's attention. How about Endeavor? More than one person quickly looks over at Todoroki, who immediately schools his face into pleasant neutrality. A pause in the air. The meanest smile Hitoshi has ever witnessed spreads across Azuka's lips, and Hitoshi was bullied for several years. Oh, ho, ho. Izuku suddenly chortles like a deranged man. I fucking hate the bitch. Oh my god. Midoriya-kun! Damn. Do tell, Monami. Hitoshi realizes he may have unleashed a beast. Their classmates only continue to feed it. Izuku proceeds to dismantle the former number two hero systematically and without mercy. Hitoshi forces himself to look away from the angrily gesturing Izuku to the rest of the class who are slowly listening with shock and horror. He never liked Endeavor much as a hero, too used to brute force, and if Aizawa's stories are true, too disparaging toward underground and support heroes. Izuku himself outlined several instances of Endeavor not working with the team or respecting other heroes, how rude and aloof he could be towards victims and fans alike. He actually quotes news footage and interviews of the man calling him a narcissistic garbage dump who took the trash and decided to spew it from his mouth. Endeavor's property damage numbers are astronomically high. His criminal injury rate is even higher. He is as destructive as the number of villains captured in Japan in the last seven months combined. I have a whole spreadsheet. It's an honest wonder how he hasn't been arrested. I didn't know any of this, Yayorozu exclaims, horrified. Ida has a scandalized hand pressed to his face. Koda is scowling. Um, Todoroki, are you okay? Saro asks. He's awkward and just as disgusted as the rest of the class, but is kind enough to check in on the other boy who was startled out of his dreamy mooning over Izuku. None of this is really a surprise, if I'm honest. Todoroki lifts one shoulder in a half shrug while everyone stares at him. All of this is public knowledge, you just have to look for it, Izuku points out. Unfortunately, there's a lot of heroes out there that have horrible records with no consequences. Something needs to be done, but too much is swept under the rug for limelight heroes. Like what Stain was saying, Kaminari asks, then immediately tenses when both Izuku and Ida turn to glare. Jiro swats his arm. Shit, sensitive topic, I'm sorry, Ida. The class president visibly composes himself. As we've discussed before, I can somewhat understand Stain's ideals and appeal. I accept your apology, Kaminari-kun. I don't, Izuku mutters. Kaminari squeaks in fear. Midoriya-kun, it's all right. My brother would not want me to be petty over a classmate's words. Oh, Ida, Hitoshi thinks. Your brother isn't here right now. He can almost visibly see Izuku agree with that thought as he frowns and turns back to Kaminari. Stain was narrow-sighted and stupid. He in no way tried to actually change anything. He was a killer for killing's sake and whatever grand plan he thought he had would have imploded in his noseless fucking face if he used an ounce of logic. Huh? The electric quirk user meeps. I don't, um... As Izuka starts passionately talking about the concepts of psychopathic prejudices and the fallacy of being judge, jury, and executioner with implicit bias, Hitoshi zones out and tries not to fluster himself. He hears, gave a bad name to vigilantism, and All Might fanboy gone rabid, which is painfully ironic to hear from Izuku, not that Hitoshi would ever say that out loud. He glances over at Todoroki, who is not paying attention to the discussion about the literal serial killer he'd encountered, but instead smiling softly at his phone. Worth it? He mumbles to Todoroki out of curiosity. The other boy nods. Hitoshi raises an eyebrow and nods at the phone. Why'd you record that? Bluntly as ever, Todoroki simply turns the phone to show Hitoshi a group chat saying, I wanted my siblings to experience it. 
Hitoshi has literally nothing to say beyond more questions, this time about Todoroki's mental state, so he just glances over the text. A uh, Fuyumi has sent several lines of emojis, many of which are laughing or crying. A Natsuo has at least three key smashes, a new group of texts pop up, as Hitoshi is reading. God damn, Greenie, go off. Shoto, marry that boy, or I will. Hitoshi snorts when Todoroki reads that. He leans on his hands and unfocuses his eyes, listening to the lull of Azuka's voice and the rare interruption of someone asking a question. He forces himself to zone back in before he can fall asleep. When he looks around, he sees Todoroki staring at his phone, the screen angled just so that Hitoshi can glimpse the contents. He's looking at rings. Hitoshi thunks his head to the desk and has to cough into his elbow to muffle his laughter. This boy is a whole trip, he thinks as he tries to mask his chuckles. His amusement is cut short by a loud, Huh? causing him to look up. Uraraka is smirking at Izuku who snorts. Bakugo is glaring over from his desk, headphones off once more. I just wanted to know if Deku-kun had anything about Bakugo. What brought this up? Hitoshi asks to no one in particular. Todoroki doesn't respond, still browsing through his phone. The other closest person, Shoji, just looks at him briefly before shrugging. Excellent. Fountains of information. All of you. He talked about all of us and what we're doing wrong. Why not be fair and also talk about Bakugo? The gravity girl ignores the pointed growl sent her way. Oh, come on, Blasty. Ashido, bless her, tries to joke. What's the harm? That shitty nerd's not going to say one damn thing I don't already know about Mike work. Then I'm pretty sure he has something to say about your hero personality, Uraraka exclaims. Or maybe some embarrassing stories? You've known each other for forever, after all. Don't you fucking dare, Bakugo warns. He is gripping the edges of his desk too tightly to be good for his hands. He is summarily ignored. Uraraka, like the professional shit stirrer she is, just faces Izuku and bats her eyelashes. Well? Where to start? I have a whole list of grievances about Kachan. There's the time he broke my All Might figurine in preschool when we were playing. The time he made me eat his mom's cooking because he felt bad wasting it but it tasted awful. The time he vomited on the couch but blamed me and I had to clean it. Oh! There's the time he burned my notebook. Stop, shitty nerd. Those were pretty tame, Izuku says. He rests his cheek on his palm, leaning on his desk and watching Baka go from the corner of his eye. I have so much more. Shut the hell up, Baka go screams. Hmm, no, I don't think I will. Shut your damn mouth before I make you, Bakugo threatens at top volume and ignites a single palm. The class, who had been watching the exchange like a high-speed tennis match, tense in anticipation. Izuku's on his feet so fast he's a blur. His own palm slams against the desk. Everyone flinches at the sudden noise and movement. Hitoshi almost flinches from Izuku's feral grin. I'd like to see you try, Ka-chan. He enunciates each syllable with purpose and a chill sweeps through the room. Bakugo flushes red and grinds his teeth. Aizawa drags himself out of his sleeping bag to glare at both boys as Bakugo lets out an unholy screech of frustration. What did I say about fighting? Do I need to repeat myself? They both sit back in their seats, one calmer than the other. Izuka watches Bakugo from the corner of his eye but doesn't make any further comment. He still smirks at the blonde boy. Aizawa's face practically screams that he needs a vacation. Maybe Atoshi should be nice and bring him a latte for their next training session. Or they could go to a cat cafe afterward. He is conflicted about the obvious annoyance on his mentor's face. There's really only so much an exhausted man can take, isn't there? No more confrontations happen during their not-quite-English period. Ashido and Hakakure distract from the tension and cajole the class into making get-well cards for present Mike. Hitoshi draws a doodle of a bird, having heard Aizawa call his best friend a cockatoo many, many times. Yayorozu creates craft supplies, and he notes that Izuka's card is incredibly well-sketched and... Also a horrifying contrast of neon colors. Present Mike will love it. Aizawa disappears from the room like a ghost before anyone can ask him to deliver the gifts. All right, listeners, this concludes the first half to this one shot. It's it's a pretty lengthy one, so I wanted to split it up. I hope you all are enjoying this so far. Let me know what your thoughts or reactions are to the first half of this one. I was so excited to start this one, so I'm really eager to hear what your thoughts are as well. And as always, thank you all so much for listening.